Dad and Lonnie to write. Um, this is The Householder's Life. I don't know that I would read the whole thing, but it's in Yoga International, and I wanted... It spoke to me, and I wanted to see if if this had any meaning to where we were going. But it's called The Householder's Life, and it's really a very long article. But Yeah, let me see if I can do that and just kind of pull it. The following discourse was given during Darshan at Mata Amritananda Mai's ashram in Kerala, southern India. It was prompted by a question about how a householder can live in the world and still maintain a spiritual life. So let me just pull out some things and see if we can work off this. A householder who wishes to lead a spiritual life after completing his responsibilities in the world should exercise renunciation from the very beginning. Renunciation demands constant and long-term practice. He may not be able to relinquish everything externally. Therefore, he should try to be detached from within. His mind should not get too involved in things. In order to keep the spirit of inner detachment, Lakshabodha, constant awareness of the goal, is very important. Whatever happens in the home or outside the home, one should always contemplate and pray in this manner. My goal is far beyond all these silly and trivial worldly problems. O oh Lord, please do not push me into these conflicts and arguments. Give me the strength and courage to be in the midst of these problems and still remember you and remain detached. Let me try to work through them as part of my duty, but let me be untouched by their vibrations. A we probably should get into some of those right away because okay. even to be in the midst of problems and yet still be detached, and also that whole idea of the inner and outer, you know, that, uh, that help me be inwardly detached, even though I still have, you know, outward constrictions. What we're coming to is, is try, trying to dissolve that dichotomy between the inner and the outer. Because even when we, we, we say that there is an external reality that's apart from my mind, we're still back into where did it, where did it come from? In, in a sense, it still has an underlying assumption that ideas would have to leave their source. And then, just that last part of there about the vibrations, I mean, gosh, as I've traveled the country, you hear all kinds of different things about certain microwaves that can get you and this and that. You know, all kinds of things. And, and certain people that have bad vibes and good vibes and stay away from this and that. You can see that underneath all of that is that assumption that ideas have left their source and that there are things that are harmful, causative in the world in some way. And that's one of the things that we, as we keep going into it more and more and more, that we want to have that dissolve. So what's the better truth? Well, to me it's, it's kind of like purify my thoughts, Holy Spirit. Take all my thoughts and the thoughts that have elements of truth in them, you know, keep those elements, wash them <laughs> clean. The, the elements that are not in line with you, shine away or let go. Help me let go of it. Every, with the thought level. Because even when I get to that inner outer thing, you know, it, you, it just, just never seems to be a solution. You know, we've been around and around and talked about changing the form without really changing, looking at the beliefs doesn't do it. And the, the other thing would be to think that, well, I won't change the form. I should be able to get this in any situation. And I'm a person in situations, and so I'm going to stick it out. And that has to get questioned, too, because if I believe I'm a person in a situation, whether it's a householder in a, in a household, so to speak, or an employer employee in an in a institution or an employee in an institution or a, a person in a family or whatever, that is still something that I have to start to question. And, and just you can hit that whenever you hear that, I ought to be able to get this in this situation. It's, it's saying that there's a reality, a perceptual reality to the situation and also to, to me as a person. And I ought to be able to get peace perceiving myself as a person in this situation, when in fact the only way that I'm ever going to be able to be at peace is to
let go of the way that I've constructed my life, so to speak, my identity. Otherwise, it's, it, it just never works because I still have something in mind that I'm going to defend, no matter what the situation is. That whole inner outer thing, just the thought that that is the way it is, I mean, that construct, the pain is. All of it. I mean, that's, that's it. One of the things that's been coming to me as we've been talking is that I'm either at peace in the knowledge of who I am truly, or I'm in, in my conflicted mind and trying to construct this self-image. I mean, it's like those are the two choices. And I, I still no, I still notice the question comes up when I'm in my conflicted mind and I'm feeling this turmoil. I know that one option is to, is to talk and to put it out on the table. And I notice I still would rather do it myself at times. Um, Which is my self-concept. It's a person that I guess one of the questions that I have is, um, th and this is a doing question, it's like, what is there to do to get past some of the fears so that I feel like I would be open and receptive to being that vulnerable and putting the issues on the table? What is there to do? Yeah. Uh, Well, that was just so big that there wasn't any choice but to call and talk. For a couple of days now, I've just been like walking around being miserable and um, thinking that there was something I could do to get through the fear and feeling so fearful, like I just, I didn't want to give it up. You didn't want to give up the fear? I didn't want to, I didn't want to deal with the issues. Mm -hmm. Just shutting down. Just actually, yeah, just shutting down. And so last night I just took some forgiveness worksheets and went out and sat in the parking lot and wrote and cried. So if we get back to that original thing you were saying about it's either this construction I've made or who I am. Even to say that who I am, that's to bring Christ or, or true identity in. If you could even just say that idea of construction that I've made where I'm this little figure in the dream or the dreamer of the dream, because the dreamer of the dream is still its perception, you see, it's not saying there's no dream. That seems, that seems just too unimaginable, not even conceivable of, of a true reality. But the key thing is this, this thing of dreamer of the dream versus dream figure. So, so are you saying to try to zone in on my true identity is, is too big a span, it's like too much like going from A to Z, whereas if I could, you know, use the analogy of dreamer of the dream, that, that's more like hitting somewhere in the middle. Yeah, to, to call, to use that analogy, or the Holy Spirit, I mean, he's the mediator between truth and illusions, you know, he's the one who, who sees the illusions but knows they're not true and keeps reminding the mind this isn't true, or uh, the miracle, or... Um, Right mind, like you've used. I'm not, I'm not in my right mind. To me, it's wrong mind, right mind. They're both still perceptual, but it's like they're one is like above the battlefield. One has a wholly different view and everything. And what I want to do is I want to be able to look at the false calmly. The false calmly. It's it does when when I start it starts coming into awareness. It does not feel comfortable or calm because my mind believes that it's, these are judgments and these are, are real. Whether I'm judging myself as as an independent, strong, powerful person, which is a judgment on that end, or I'm weak, I'm crying, I'm helpless, I'm afraid, I'm never going to get this course or this and that. It's like the mind is saying whichever way is coming. It's like the mind is giving a reality to the judgment. Um, 
as we as I was leaving today and I left storming away from home, skidding the car, <laughs> you know, I can't deal with you, Steve. I rolled up the window and left. And um, the only thing he said to me is, I can't believe that you're going through this course that's supposed to bring you peace of mind and you're acting like that. I can't believe that Dave went through this when he... Da, 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 da. And I said, well, Dave wasn't married and in a relationship with three kids in this trap. And now I'm in this and I'm trying to figure out how I need to get out of this. It was that whole, and then that whole idea of getting out of it, Dave. That's a scary thing. I don't want to be thinking about that right now. <laughs> you know? But that's what came up. I mean, he said, I can't believe. For me, and I know that this is, is definitely a defense and definitely an illusion that but I still have it in my mind that it would be a lot easier if I were not I mean I looked at somebody in my yoga class today who said she's not married and doesn't have kids and I thought how lucky I wish I had never started this that's where I'm at so I could just start fresh but I know that in the mind I'm at there'd be something else trapping me it's just like the comp you know but that is what has been going on and it can seem I think that fits in with also when you can see where it can stir things up or be a, some kind of a threat with, with Rhonda being such a symbol because there seems to be so many parallels. And it's, it's that whole thing of, my God, if, if someone can do it, then, then I could even am do I it. Do am I yeah, supposed to? Or, 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 I mean, or well, conceivably, you're not to yeah, you know, that whole thing. And it's the same thing that I would say of anybody who's queer who's traveled and around and, and you hear them, it's like all of your objections seem to be get swallowed up in the clarity of their ideas. All of the things that you put up, uh, but, 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 or I could never because of da, 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 or, you know, if, if my life was the same as yours, or all the different things seem to just get swallowed up into that. Because it's like, it starts to become like an actuality that, that, I, that question of what's stopping you kind of starts to come up to mind. If I really sense that if I follow this out all the way through, 100%, all, follow it to the end, that, that I will reach peace and happiness, then I, can, then I can really seriously and with great sincerity and passion entertain that question, what is stopping me? Holy Spirit, what is standing in my way? But... If I'm too terrified of, of following it all the way out to the end, then I'm, I'm to the point where I don't know if I even want to ask that question because I don't know if I can make it. Well, and in the, in the fear, I want to be able to hold on to one really legitimate excuse because I think that'll save me. And, and, and But like you said... You know, and Krista said earlier, if it's not this, it'll be that. You know, who am I kidding to think that if the form changed, that somehow, you know, that would be the answer? And for me, it's it's like, you know, being willing to to say, yeah, I I still have some excuses. If that's what's going on, I mean. And because this is very uncompromising. Mm -hmm. And as long as I think I have a legitimate excuse for delaying, mm -hmm. then I can give myself permission to delay. Mm -hmm. I notice um, I, don't, I don't think that I want excuses. I'm sure there's a part of my mind that does. But what I look at, and it's like, how will I ever be able to, to detach myself from all of this, and I know that that's an ego question, but I, I mean, I look and I just feel so overwhelmed and so hopeless. Something that got clearer to me when I was listening to one of the tapes was this whole idea that my attachment to form is a projection of my attachment to judgment to my thoughts. And so obviously the only way to become detached in form 
is to become detached from my thoughts. 